One reads a lot of scripts, uh, and this one just uh, grabbed my attention. I first wrote it as a kiddie story way back in the 90s for my own children. My, my eldest son at the time had just changed from a school in Cape Town to a school in Johannesburg and was feeling very unsettled. It works on many different levels because you also have the uh, journey of the mother and Felix facilitates the mother's journey. So I wrote a number of children's stories, but I wrote one about a young boy who was different from all the other boys at school and didn't quite feel at home, and his consolation was music. And that was the thing that attracted me to the film. You know, you've got coming of age, you've got a feel-good, strong story, plus the musical element, which just sort of is like the cherry on the top. I'm still practicing for the school concert. Felix, yes, and this is a long time school concert. I'm going to go to the 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 school concert. How do I know not to end up going to the school concert? I'm going to go to the school concert. I'm going to go to the Some things just drive you, and this was one of them. <laughs> Mr. Impresario! That's me, how? Well, the casting of Felix was nerve-wracking, <laughs> to say, because I knew that we had to cast it properly. Yeah, Felix. I have a many scholarship. Lindy, where a mom of three is, is basically just been working very hard for many years to keep it together. Oh dear, I am sorry, Lindy. I, I was just experimenting with the mask for the paper I'm giving on the ancient Dogen tribe of Mali. Damn uncomfortable. Ah, hold that for me, will you? There you go. Why don't you try it on? No, thank you. Ah, splendid. Eh? Uh, toast, Torres. He loves his marmalade, doesn't he? Tell me, how was our boy's first day at school? Very nice. Excellent. Felix gets his name from Mr. Soames, and he's always been a pillar of strength for her. And I, I was wondering if I could borrow a hundred grand until month end. Oh. <laughs> Certainly. I want you to consider this a gift, and you take the rest of the afternoon off, eh? Oh. Restoring the boy's dignity is far more important than a Dogen war dance. All of this kind of cocooned mother hen thing is because she also has her experienced life on the opposite spec end of the spectrum with her husband, having been a jazz musician, overindulged in alcohol, so she knows how rough that world is, and then she's wanting for her children to grow up in a different reality. Hey, shh, 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 shh. This is Lindy with you, rubbish! Out you have a niela, man, niela. First you steal my man, then you want to steal my boy. No, mama. Asim John Janga, sis. We tried to help this guy with music work. I do. He's a genius, your lady. That as well his boy. My boy. Our children actually take us to new places, and certainly Felix takes his mother, Lindiwe, to a place where she needs to get to and can't get there herself. Felix, we had to find mama. exactly the right Felix. But this was crucial, crucial, crucial to the film's success. Hi, I'm Shani. Junior Mawasa and I play the character of Felix. We had to find someone who had that automatic vulnerability on the screen, but charm at the same time. And it was difficult finding that. Auditioning was really hard and I was I consider myself very lucky. Because what happened is at the audition, uh, the first audition, I messed up badly. He didn't mess up. He thinks he messed up. He didn't really mess up. The thing about Felix trying to get into orchestra, he tried everything he could. He went beyond what he could do. He actually looked for, 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 he actually begged Mr. Murray to, to go back and perform again. All these little things, he did them again, just like me. I practiced the night before I went to the audition, to the callback, and I, I nailed it, yeah. And we had school scouts, and uh, we had casting agents, and it just went on and on and on. And eventually, one found, you know, found the last three. And they went through another whole series of auditions to be entirely sure that he was right, because he had to be exactly right. Yeah, he just nailed it too, I guess, yeah. And then working with the, with the three little gorgeous kids, Ooh, Ogwe to and, um, and Elvis and uh, uh, Sayani, 
They're amazing. They've all had an experience in front of the camera at some point and their concentration is amazing. My tax shop money. I'm just starved. And now, I'm the girls who talk and Jay. We have a tutor and a teacher, and she and I like her. She's friendly, awesome tutor. <laughs> um, she she helps us with our schoolwork. Anything you feel, you know, like back home, you're happy, or all your emotions. Hi, Dad. Yes. It was challenging um, to work within the time frames that we had to work with children because, you know, there are time limits in terms of how long they can be on set. And so we had to be very organized from our side that we worked efficiently um, so that we could do what we had to do every day with the children. Traba, Felix. Present. Thank you, ma'am. So I'm Janet Sussman. Um, I'm on location from England <laughs> to my hometown and I play a teacher called Mrs. Cartwright. Got the click right, didn't I? Baba. Now, who knows what Felix means? Mrs. Get this, Clotilda Cartwright. Happiness, Felicitas, happy Felix. Quite right, Samuel. Welcome to grade eight, Felix. I'm sure you'll be very happy here. And a very nice uh, relationship and vibe developed actually between Clayani, uh, 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 who plays Felix, and, and Dame Janet, who plays Mrs. Cartwright. And it, the whole relationship and, uh, really worked. So it was fun working with her. There are not loads of scripts from the South African film industry. There are not loads of scripts that are worth seeing from any film industry, if the truth be told. Good scripts are rather rare. And so when you come across a good script, your little heart leaps with delight, like a gazelle. And you think, ah, oh, at last, something with humor, with delight, and something that isn't a downer about South Africa. She managed to bring all the warmth that was needed for Mrs. Cartwright, because Mrs. Cartwright is Felix's ally in the school environment. I think I'm into the next round. Next. Break a leg. Look, this is a classic Jazz concert, not some hip hop gig. Quite frankly, I don't think we can accommodate a penny whistle. I can play the saxophone, sir. Simpson, please pass him that saxophone, will you? Thank you. Thank you. Next. Felix likes Mrs. Cartwright in a motherly way. Or an auntie, like, as an auntie or as a mother, yeah, second mother. So the story unfolds, and I see that Mrs. Cartwright, like all good teachers, has a great influence on this child. And if we all remember back to our school days, if you had a good teacher, or you had a teacher who was on your side, it makes all the difference to your life. She makes him feel comfortable. She welcomes him. She does all these things that actually make him feel like he could tell her anything. So I was very happy to see Mrs. Cartwright wreaking her magic on a small boy who needed help. The third term concert is the most prestigious musical event of the year. So if you're not properly prepared for your audition, please don't waste your time. We're looking for the cream of the crop. Comprehendo? Sure. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's sure. Yeah. It actually reminds me of how it was um, the first day of my school. When I got there, the first day of school, I was like an outcast. I was like, nobody knew me. Like Felix, too, when he got to the school for the very first time, nobody knew him. Oh, shame. So you're a mommy's boy now? <laughs> and your lime green school bag? Does it glow in the dark? <laughs> it's actually very scary for him. Oh. Right. Uh, you dropped something. Oops. Uh, sorry, happy he's back. Well, Felix is very lucky that he had Ricardo, and yeah, because he's a very big fellow, so take care of Felix. We struggled to cast Ricardo. I don't know why, but it just wasn't easy. I was relieved because he's actually older than the other kids, but when I saw 14-year-olds that were larger than him, I thought, well, that's fine. 
and he has a baby face. He's got this sort of round baby face, very sympathetic feel to him. Um, Ricardo January is like this down-to-earth um, guy who's actually 14 years old, but he looks like 16, 17 years old. Jelly baby. Thanks. Mmm. Apricot jam. Lekker. He's like a gentle giant. He just loves his friends, Felix and Sam, and he loves protecting them and having fun. And he's not afraid of who he is, and he uses that to his advantage. I mean, like, who the heck can spell pneumonia? P N E U M O N I A. Okay. There you go. He can spell everything, Pella. I didn't actually know who Samuel Pepys was, and I. And I told my mum who I was playing Samuel Pepys, she's like, oh, there was also a famous ancestor, Samuel Pepys. I don't know where I got the idea from to suddenly include somebody called Samuel Pepys. <laughs> I really don't know, but I just thought it would be fun to have this little punchy boy who's the opposite of Felix, but, but he's, he's a fish out of water. Gives you good insight into Restoration England. So although he's hugely knowledgeable and, and uses jawbreakers all the time, he's just as left out as Felix is because he's the, you know, he's the class nerd and he's also ostracised by the, the cool kids. What does it mean, N O C D? Not our class, dear. Meaning they're beneath us. Some upper class twits think they're better than everyone else. So they have to boost their own lame egos. Meanwhile, they're actually the labors. Casting the bully boys was fun uh, and finding the right bully boys. Well, Junior Junior is a very uh, bratty character, I guess. He's quite an arrogant kid. He thinks he could do everything because of the money that his family has. Um, takes advantage of his parents because they give him a lot of leeway. And uh, he kind of uh, blames his mistakes on his two friends. Uh, who, his one friend Rocky is very stupid, so he kind of takes advantage of that. And Marshall, who he gets angry at in the end. I've changed my name to Rocky. Man. Rocky. Ooh, nice name. Rocky's previous name was Cyril Peasbody. And obviously any boy going through high school wouldn't really want to be called that because it's quite an embarrassing name. And he's used to being the bully and making fun of everyone else. So he didn't really want to give anyone else material to bully him with. So he changed his name to Rocky. I hate people which bully other people. I think they can walk around other people. I don't like that guy. I really hate that. In real life, I think everyone kind of goes through a sort of bullying, so people might tease you or they might joke around with you, but I know I go to a school that doesn't tolerate bullying. Well, in real life, I am a bully, but that's kind of changing a bit. Um, I'm helping kids out at the moment. I've never bullied someone. Um, I'm actually a butterfly sometimes. I get a bit physical. Push, push. Thank you, Junior! Pass it, pass it! I do play sports, uh, numerous amounts of sports, but um, I, actually, I recently stopped rugby because I'm a drummer. Uh, I didn't play music in the beginning. Um, what happened is I was told that we're going to be playing the sax. I'm going to be playing the saxophone, and I have to go for lessons. Ricardo is very proud of making the orchestra, even though it's just a triangle and under the percussion section. Chris, Chris Luke, he's a very, very good teacher. He, he taught me how to play the sax. Uh, this is kind of how you hold the trumpet and how you look when you're playing it. And that was a lot of fun as well. Listen and learn, prima donna. And then we do. We have a, a colourful array of parents and, you know, um, if I think of this pretty. And, of course, the delight uh, that I would like to talk about is the casting of the Bozza Boys because we had to cast musicians largely for that. And luckily we found actors uh, that were also musicians, which was great, Royston Stoffels, who plays uh, Bra Fingers. And Tapella is a singer, although not a, a saxophonist, but... You know, music is in his bones, so that worked out well. An interesting character, and I think it comes from an interesting time when people 
played together, I think, under, under difficult circumstances. Did Tata know any real gangsters? Plenty. Sometimes they'd make us play till the sun came up. Hak for tell you, my lady. Let us play it. Hey, 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 hey. The music is fantastic. Yeah, yes. yeah uh, that is, you know, it, it, it touches, it touches one. It's our sound. You can go anywhere in the yeah, world. Yeah. You hear that sound, you know. God, that South Africa. Aha, exactly. Like I was saying, every time after they've seen the movie, when they say, ta da 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 All the music has been originally composed for the film by by Murray. I've composed music for films before. I suppose the biggest one I did was for Country of My Skull, which had Juliette Binoche and Samuel Jackson in it. It was directed by John Boorman. So that was a really big film for me. But I've done quite a lot of local films too. The big difference with this film is that it's all about music. It's not just incidental music in the background or something just to make a bit of emotion. It's the actors are actually playing on screen. And that made a whole new challenge, which was interesting for me and exciting to work on. We have a style of jazz in Cape Town that people all over the world can recognize. And um, you know, there are only a few countries or a few places that can say that. You know, New Orleans is a kind of jazz that people know comes from there, but we've got a style that people can recognize. So it's a very exciting thing that people who see the film will be hearing a style of music that's unique. I've always been mad about jazz, and I used to, when I was an actress in Joburg, I used to hang out at Kippies near the market theatre every night. Well, not every night, but a lot. And, and also at the Roxy Rhythm Bar, and I was really crazy about bands like the African Jazz Pioneers and Captain Linda's Jazz Quartet, etc. And, and then when I decided to expand it, I just thought, well, since it is about music and jazz is one of my big loves, instead of making it about classical music, which it was originally, the little boy played the flute and hoped to get into an orchestra, I decided to make it about jazz. Cape Town is similar in a way to New Orleans in that we've got a melting pot of many different types of people here. And just as um, they had slaves and they had all types of marching bands and various different things, all of which influenced their jazz. We've got a big mix of people here. So we've got, uh, for example, we, the rhythms that we use here are similar to the guma rhythms that um, the marching bands use here. But we've got Christian hymns from when missionaries were teaching. Um, we've got all different styles of music and those together make Cape Jazz unique. South African jazz. I know Hugh Masekela, I've known him for a long time. I knew Miriam Makeba. I'm of that generation. So this sort of music, it feels in my blood. And there's a lot of music. I think there are about 40 or pieces of music altogether in the, in the film. They're all original. And they were all played by proper Cape Town jazz musicians, which is why I think it sounds fantastic. It's really great. <laughs> Uh, choosing the locations was quite a journey to find all the right locations. Um, we were very specific about what we wanted and that it had to be right. I've been climbing over dunes <laughs> on several days trying to find the dune. It wasn't difficult choosing sex uh, to film in it's a beautiful environment. We actually came here and knew we had to film in sex. We decided to choose Langa because Langa is very beautiful in, in, in the sense of its colors and its vibrancy and its, its, its picture book, Belanga. You know, it's got all those lovely little houses with all bright colors and there's a lovely vibe in Langa, which, you know, obviously we pick up on the screen. Roberta chose, which is a really great decision of hers and the powers that be, to um, shoot this film on a camera called the Ari Alexa, which in the world of HD and that is one of the big, big godfathers and uh, really a beautiful camera. I would describe it as a fable. Uh, so, you know, even in the style that I've adopted to, to shoot the, the film in it, it's very sort of almost uh, naive, I would say. Um, and simplistic. It's, 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 I'm hoping it reminds one of if you were paging through a children's book. I was very nervous because a lot of our cast was, was under 16. And those days are long. Um, I, and I have to say, not just me, but my entire technical crew are completely blown away by the cast of Felix. Just the level of I don't know where they get their professionalism from. And then on top of it, they can act beautifully. So 
Look, I mean, I take my hat off to Roberta. I think she, she looked far and wide for this, for this cast. I absolutely loved working with these children. They were a complete delight. And, um, you know, I, I can't begin to tell you how fantastically fulfilling and rewarding it has been working with them. I, I adore them. They have been wonderful, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. I love Roberta. I think she's amazing. I think she's, she cares in everything. I love Roberta. I think Roberta is an amazing director. When I started working with Roberta on this, I felt completely in safe hands. She knows exactly what she wants. She's very nuanced and very, oh, she's marvelous. She gives me that time to actually think about the emotion. And because I heard that Roberta also used to be an actress back in the day. So I, I think she has that link and that connection to actually see me as an actor and actually connect to me. This has really drawn me back to directing. Um, you know, I've, I've directed a lot in my life, but in the sort of middle stage, I got more into the producing and have really enjoyed directing this. And it's made me realize how much I, I actually prefer directing to producing, I have to say, having really come back to it with this feature film. Um, so I've, I've loved every minute and would like to do more, definitely. This is a good, feely movie. It's lovely. And, um, I think that's what cheers one up, no end, to get a story of somebody who's trying to find their father and finds it through music. What young people can learn from the story is about following your dream, following your passion, and being dedicated uh, to what you want to do. It's going to give people a lot of hope. It's going to give people a lot to think about. And I think it's going to give most bullies out there you know, a lot to think about too. I hope it's magical. I hope that they go in and, and come out. What a, what a lovely, magical experience.